Hello, I wish to make a sort of a little bit of a update on uh, my latest uh, Let's Talk video because I didn't think I made myself completely clear maybe in that one. Uh, so I apologize for that. <laughs> that did turn out a bit wonky. Um, one of the facts I wanted to um, point out is that uh, I mentioned in that in that video that I wished anyone who could have success in anything the best of luck, which is not true. Um, I don't wish good luck for people in the, you know, um, weapons industry, any luck for example, and not in the fur industry either. But um, when it comes to YouTubers, you know, I don't really see the harm. Unless they are like an actually, you know, pro, I mean active hate group or so, but I think those channels get shut down immediately. Um, unfortunately the internet is a forum for these type of people um, but um, I think we can all you know continuously fight against it so. Uh, the other thing uh, that uh, I wanted to bring up was the thought of uh, um, jealousy. Um, I Last time for, for whatever mindset I was in, I kept pushing about that it still work, uh, doing uh, Let's Plays and YouTube videos and uh, keeping a channel, you know, and yes, I, I do think so, but uh, the point of the jealousy aspect, which I understand, is that for most people, um, the thing that brings you your income, your job, or your however you, <laughs> you know, it's a necessary evil. Uh, it's something you do uh, for your income. You may have better days, you may have worse days, you may like some aspects of your job and hate, absolutely despise others. And for most people it is true that you would never ever do your job unless you were paid. It's a, you know, it's a fact. Um, also when people be like Oh well, just get a job that you like. Um, there, that there is no, there's no reality to that statement. Because, sure, um, you can try and aim for that. You can, you can work for it. You can, um, uh, you know, uh, network and you can take courses and classes and educate yourself. Um, but there is a limited amount of these types of jobs uh, and some people are extremely happy doing a job that others would not be happy with but there's still you won't necessarily become what you want to be you will most likely get a job that is needed that someone needs to do uh, it can be fantastic if you have great co-workers, you can make a job that is uh, tedious or boring or horrible or degrading. could be fantastic with the right co-workers or you may get some aspects of the work that is fits you like a glove and others that don't. But you know, you do it because you get paid. And some people will get extremely, you know, upset that someone gets money for sitting and playing video games and being silly and making jokes. That could be very offensive to some people. But again, I think that my point is that life's unfair. Some people are lucky and some aren't and even if you do have fun uh, keeping your channel and you make money of it, uh, there's still a... Um, you still have a... Um, how should I put it? A d demand on you to to produce, you know. So um, some things are more fun than others, and some things give you money, and some things don't. Um, I don't think it's anything to get particularly upset about. I mean, why can't we just be happy for the people who are lucky enough to get to do things they like? Um, why can't we be happy for them? Um, I don't know. And then again, also, uh, one point was that I thought they didn't bring any harm into this world, uh, successful YouTubers. Uh, and I still stand by that, but then I also, I didn't mention at all that they do have an amount of power. 
and with great responsibility. <laughs> um, oh, I even miss... well, you know what I mean. Um, the thing is that, sure, when PewDiePie plays a game um, that he likes and he loves and he has fun, I am pretty damn sure that the amounts of downloads or the amounts of sales for that particular game are, you know, heightened. They, you know, they get more sales. So it's good commercial for the games that these YouTubers endorse. Likewise, then, the backside of that being that if they don't endorse something or they hate something or they play something and they say, oh, Jesus Christ, this is shitty and look at these controls, they don't work, so on and so forth, um, that could have a negative impact on the sales of that particular game. Uh, I still think that... I mean, for example, with PewDiePie there was the bear incident. I, it Was it Bear Simulator it was called? I'm not sure. But apparently while he was gay streaming or let's playing that, he like gave the uh, the game like the finger and stuff like that, which I can agree is a bit harsh. Um, he does affect um, people and, and his fans will be like, oh yeah, then we all rally together against these, this game or these, you know, but uh, I still don't think that, I still don't think he means it um, eh, or how should I say? It's um, it's still the fact that people will have different opinions and be vocal about their opinions, particularly today with all the social media and all the the tweeting and twatting and everything. Um, so um, yes, these big YouTube names can affect uh, companies. So on the other hand, you know, the, like uh, PewDiePie and many others, um, Markiplier as well, I do believe, do endorse and um, endorse indie games and indie developers, which might be able to give them a chance to, you know, grow and get more publicity and, you know, have their small games be successful against these AAA titles, big budget mega thing so they get them get them a chance to get in the game and fight you know which is great um i i do believe they have some responsibility uh if they if you know that you have 40,000 hundred super duper quadrillion viewers uh if you make a statement about something um you got to be aware that you can affect people, you know. Um, then again, I don't believe you need to, you know, go around and kiss ass. If you feel that the game is shitty, yeah, you should be able to say so. I mean, there are a lot of shitty games out there. Um, and hopefully a good game developer would, you know, see see that, respond to it in the way that they make uh, learn from their mistakes and try and make it a different way or correct what they have. I mean, it's easy for me to say, sure, but th that's what comes to mind at least. If you if you put out a product, you got to be, you know, ready to take the the heat for it. Um, and most of the YouTubers and uh, that I've watched and Angry Joe as a reviewer are sure they those the large portion of of them is just entertainment but they do affect their viewers and their fans and their crowds uh, they can help push up sales or push them down so I do think they have some responsibility but then I don't think they should have to censor themselves all the time I don't think that is what YouTubing and Let's Playing is about, that'd be ridiculous. Um, it would take out the essence of it. Which sort of brings us to uh, another point, which is why I think PewDiePie, first and foremost, has been such a tremendous success that he has been. 
and that is because I think he part partly because he came in the wake of the uh, reality TV thing craze that's been going on for such a long time now it's just normal um, um, but he seems sincere haters don't think that of course but from my perspective I think part of his success has been that he has been sincere in his reactions I think with his success he might have um, uh, what's Avadriva? Uh, he might exaggerate his, you know, expressions and uh, reactions a little bit because he got a response from that in the first place, and so he exaggerated a bit more because that's what people like, that's what people want, uh, and he's trying to please fans to a degree. Uh, first, you might do things just for yourself, and it's like, hey, I'm. I like doing this, I want to share this with you, I want to share the laughs, I want to share my reactions when I get scared. And then if you get a response, you might start to exaggerate a little bit, you start maybe start acting a little bit, because that's what people wanted. I'm not saying he does that, but I'm saying that's a theory that I have, a feeling that I have. Um, but um, I think part of his success was that he seemed like a really nice, sincere guy who just likes to have fun. He likes to spread the fun. Um, fans of his are saying, when I have a bad day, I put one of your videos on and I feel better. You know, well, that's one of the best things that you can do for someone else. Period. Um, haters are just going to be ignored. Uh, ignored. Uh, they're going to be angered by him and, and his... I mean, if you you know, if you don't like someone, it doesn't click for you, you can get annoyed, right? But usually you just ignore the, the thing that annoys you and try to <laughs> do something else that makes you, that you like and that makes you happy. So I think part of his, if he feels sincere in that he just wants to have fun and he wants to share the fun, um, the, I like some of his stuff and I not particularly much like others. Um, I have, I'm very fond of his um, reaction videos where he is playing an, an emotional game and has a sincere deep emotional response to something that happens in the game. Um, I think, for example, that um, when he cries at the end of um, The Walking Dead, both 1 and 2, uh, by the end of those games and he actually cries and he has to turn away from the camera and you know things like that to me that's very to me that states bravery and sincerity uh, it means that there's no he's not filtering a lot so you know that it's a person who is sincere or I don't know him, so I can't say that, but he projects the feeling of sincerity and also bravery because he is unfiltered in his reactions, both then and in the parts where he gets scared in other games, in horror games. He gets scared shitless, <laughs> he bumps, he stumps his toe and he's, you know, and that type of sincerity is what I think it was the biggest thing that has brought him the success he has, I believe, personally. Um, I think people respond to that. And then he also, like I mentioned before, he endorses indie developers. He uh, has done a lot of, you know, like other famous YouTubers as well, they do a lot of charity streams, charity events, they donate large amounts of money to you know charities and um, and I th I th that's the greatest part of it that is what they can do um, and also people like um, that's the positive force that they can have you know they can influence people positive and when you look back at it and see some of the, the you know controversies like with the bear thing and people are just oh they're just being silly for silly sake I still think there's a lot more positive influence onto the world and onto the net than negative, is what I'm saying. 
uh, that's the point I was trying to make in the other video. Just, you know, leave them be if you don't like them. What harm does it do? Okay, so a developer loses... Uh, you know, they make a crappy game and they get shit for it. Well, somehow you have to sort of be able to take that. And also, if you... I think they'll survive, you know. It's a tough world, but I think they'll survive. And then I have like one itty bitty tiny final thought on uh, uh, Angry Joe. Um, people hang hating on Angry Joe, and he is a more he is a reviewer more than anything else. I think I think I would say. So yes, he definitely have the power to you know say that because. He wouldn't have this power if he was just some, you know, didn't know what he was talking about. But he has a lot of, he has a lot of experience as a gamer. He has a lot of, um, uh, you know, knowledge. He's knowledgeable about uh, a lot of things within gaming. And um, he, but the thing that also impresses me, because I think he always speaks with a lot of knowledge behind what he's saying. And but still. Like any reviewer, uh, which has to be, you know, said again and again, it's also, they are always going to be partial in some way. Everyone is influenced by their own feelings, state of mind, experiences, nostalgia. I mean, sometimes you're going to be liking a game just because it's nostalgic to you or it has some aspect that you like. You're going to like it more than it was deserved and vice versa if something is in it that is doesn't appeal to you how are you gonna no one is ever completely objective you can't be you are a human being with emotions and experience you can never be completely objective um, but the one thing that I also respect deeply with Angry Joe is the fact that he um, has been offered I don't remember the exact sum, but let's say it was a substantial amount of money to endorse a game, and he didn't because he didn't like it. Uh, he thought it was poorly made. I'm not going to mention the title or anything. You can probably figure that out and look that up yourselves. But it's very easy to say yes to money. It's hard to say no for most people, right? But he understood that if he were to endorse a game, take the money, it's a bribe, basically, and then say, oh yes, this game is fantastic, but then it's not even, you know, it's not a matter of taste or anything. The game is, can be broken, it's mechanically inept, <laughs> it's not a matter of a difficulty level, the game is bad. It might have missing textures and pop, you know, glitches and bugs galore and nothing that, you know, it could be totally unplayable. His, his entire career would be tainted by that and ruined. So if you take that type of thing, you'd be very short-sighted and you'd be completely, you know, disloyal to your, to your fan base and you, and to yourself. And he, I think that's a real, that's very strong in my book to, to stand for your fans, to stand for yourself and don't, don't take the easy way out, you know. So, respect. Alright, I'll stop blabbering now.